everyone. Welcome to the channel. My name is Anna Kate, and today I have on a really awesome guest with an awesome testimony. I saw this pastor preaching on stage when I was in Arizona a few weeks ago, and I thought, who is this bold, fiery preacher? And his name is Pastor Luis Cabrera. He has an incredible testimony. He was a drug addict, uh, addicted to alcohol, porn, everything. You Literally, you can think of what he was addicted to. And he was radically saved in one day after he cried out to the Lord. The Lord took him to hell. He remembers every single moment in hell. It completely transformed his life. He's been a pastor for almost 18 years now. And I mean, just an incredible man of God. And so before we get Pastor Lewis to talk with us here, uh, I wanna give some quick love to Noble Gold, the sponsor of this video. Are you frustrated with this new administration like so many of us are, where we're seeing gas prices going up? Maybe your retirement fund is dwindling, you're losing money, and you're looking for a new approach. Well, Noble Gold is a great place to start. If you're looking for an IRA or a 401k, Precious Metals is the way to go. Take out a qualifying IRA this month and Noble Gold will gift you a solid gold 22 karat, one tenth ounce American Eagle bullion coin. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. So I'm here with Pastor Luis Cabrera. We're going to jump right into it because you have an incredible testimony, a life of drugs and alcohol. And then yeah. one night, the Lord delivered you from your addictions Amen. and showed you a vision of hell. My goodness, tell yes. us your testimony because it really is one of the most incredible ones I've ever heard. Yes, um, you know, I grew up in a Christian home and at age 14, 15 years old, I left God, I left the church and I started doing, you know, what I wanted to do. And so I started exploring into alcohol and drugs and that opened a door for the enemy to come in to destroy my life. And let me tell you, I was involved with such evil people. Um, just, uh, just thinking back about it, just, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's ugly. But anyways, so living a life of drugs and alcohol, I was 25 years old and, you know, fast forward to 25. And then I was living in San Antonio at that time. And I remember my brother had a, a, a crazy accident. He was, he was drinking and driving. And he actually killed his girlfriend in that car accident and he went to prison and in prison, he found God. And because he found God in prison, he, after he got out of prison, he called me and told me, Louis, I want you to give God six months of your life. If, in the, and if, if God don't change your life, I will never bother you ever again. So I took it like, you know, like a kind of like a dare challenge. Sure. You know? Yeah. And so at that point I had nothing to lose. I was, I was a 25 year old college dropout drug addict, alcoholic, hooked to porn, hooked to everything but Jesus. And so I was like, you know what? At that time, I was delivering Chinese food. Um, and I thought I had a good job. <laughs> and so um, I came down here to South Texas, back to Harringen. And um, I remember m my my brother was like, I want you to really seek after God, seek after him, pray to him, ask him to help you and watch. And so, you know what? I took that challenge on. And so I remember that that first week in October 2003, I was, I remember I would go to my to my friend's house to go smoke, and I would come back at you know midnight, one o'clock in the morning, all high, and then after that I would um, I would just get on my knees and just start praying to the Lord. I said, Lord, and I mean I started, I mean I prayed some real prayers. I I would literally tell God, God, I'm tired of hearing about you. I want to see you face to face. I can't stop doing drugs. I can't stop doing all these things. My my brother found you in prison, but I have I've yet to find you. I grew up in the word. I grew up, but I, I've never felt you, seen you, experienced you. If you're real, God, I want you to change my life because I understand that I have a calling. I I I had a calling at age 12, and the just told me that one day he was gonna take me around the nation. And I, I was 12 years old, and I was like, I don't even know this guy. Like, I was like, shut up. You know, I don't even know who you are, you know. But but you know what? But God began to work in my life in those two weeks, and he began to stir something in me that I don't know what was going on. But all I know is that I was praying that prayer for two weeks. And I, I remember one time I told God this. I go, God, if you're not real, I will never serve you ever in my life. And I was bold. 
I was like, okay, God, because I'm tired of people talking about, talking to me about God, about you, but I don't know you personally. So you're literally at the crossroads where yes. you give this, you give the Lord yeah. his opportunity. This is his last opportunity to show you tangibly, yes. physically, somehow that he is real or else it's over. You're closing that door. Goodbye. That's right. God loves a yes. challenge. And especially when you seek him with all of your heart, mm -hmm. the Bible says you will find, find him. him. I had a very similar prayer. I said, God, if you're real, I want to know you. If That's you're not right. leaving me alone, I'm That's done right. hearing about you. And so in 2003, the Lord took you to yes. hell in a vision. Yeah. That's so it, it, this, this happened on October 11th, 2003. I'll never forget the day. It was a day that I was reborn again. I was born again in Jesus Christ because I was a backslider, um, literally a lukewarm backslider. And so anyways, uh, I remember it was just a, a casual night. I was at my friend's house. And the next thing I know is um, I had my eyes closed. We were sitting outside his um, front yard. And I just had my eyes closed. And the next thing I know is when I open up my, my eyes, I'm in a real dark room, dark place. I couldn't explain where I was at. I knew I was seeing, I knew I was kind of like in a dream slash vision because I just could not understand where I was at. I, I was like, okay, am I awake? Is this the drugs talking? Like, am I high right now? Like, and I tried everything, Anna. I tried everything to wake me up. Couldn't. And the next thing I know, I see a bright light. I mean, I'm talking about the brightest light that you'll ever see getting closer and closer to me. And the next thing I know, it's so close to me that I couldn't even see. I mean, nothing because it was so bright. And I remember I, I just had my eyes closed. And then that voice spoke to me. That light spoke to me. And Anna, let me tell you something. When you hear the audible voice of God, oh man, it will change your life forever. I feel like the Israelites back in Exodus, when the, when the when the Mount Sinai when um, God fell upon Mount Sinai, man, they were trembling and they were scared. That's the way I was. I was like, I knew right away that this was real. I knew it wasn't a dream. I knew that I was literally in that dark room. And the next thing I know is that is that voice speaks to me, and he. He says, do you know who I am? And I was like, uh, I didn't want to say anything. I was like, uh, yes and no, but um, are you God? He goes, you know who I am. And man, with that, just that voice of voices, I mean, it just, oh man. And he goes, you said you wanted to change your life, but you kept on hanging around the same people. And I was like, Lord, well, those are my friends. I love them. You know, I, 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 you know, I would do everything with them. And he, and he told me that specifically, again, you said you want to change your life, but you kept hanging around the same people. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm sorry, God. I mean, th those are my friends. I love them. He goes, you said that you knew me, but I never knew you. Depart from me. Wow. I never knew you. And that's in Matthew 7. Let me tell you, Anna, the next thing I know is a tunnel opens up the bottom at the bottom of my feet and I go sliding down a tunnel, dark tunnel. And the next thing I know at the end of that tunnel is a huge lake of fire with flames all on top of it. And I fall right in the middle of that lake and I'm literally experiencing hell. I mean, literally the lake of fire. And I remember, Anna, I was screaming from the top of my lungs, Lord, I'm sorry, God, give me one more opportunity. I promise you I will change my life. I know that you are real now. I know that. I'm sorry I messed up. I'm for, Please forgive me, Lord. Please, Lord. I promise I'll serve you. And you know what? I didn't hear anything, nothing, just dead silence. And I was just there. I mean, it felt like years and years that I was there. And the next thing I know is I wake back up at my friend's house and I wake up and my friends are just, just looking down upon me and they're like, what happened to you? And I looked up, I looked around like, why? Because man, you were shaking. Like we couldn't wake you up. Your, your eyes were white. I mean, we called the ambulance cause we didn't know what to do. We, you, you were like having like, like, co like convulsions and we couldn't wake you up. You were just somewhere else. And I, I, I got up and I got up and I used my, 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 friend's restroom and I put water on my face and that same voice right there in the in the very restroom that same voice just comes down and says get 
in your truck and leave right now. And uh, <laughs> I didn't even say bye to my friends. I jet out of there. I get in my truck. I'm going home. And halfway home, something is something is stirring up in the pit of my stomach, and I, I can't explain it. Just, I, I mean, so I pull over at a Taco Bell. This is, this is like past midnight. I pull over at a Taco Bell at the parking lot, and I just jump out, and, then, and I start vomiting. I start throwing up. So I'm done. I get back in my truck, and I get home, and the Lord tells me, you're not done yet. Go and, and go and vomit some more. So I go to the side of my house, and I keep on vomiting. And the next thing I know is when, when I was finally done vomiting, and I just, I just had my eyes closed, and I'm, I'll never forget. You know, People do drugs because they, they're trying to find a high or a high and they want to stay in, in that high 24 seven. That's why I did drugs. And listen, Anna, man, after I threw up, the Holy Spirit came in my life. And the, for the first time ever, I felt a godly high, a Jesus high, a Holy Spirit high. I will never forget it. It's something that I was looking for all of my life. And I finally found it. And that voice tells me. I heard your prayer and that's why I had to send you to hell so you can understand that there is a hell and there is a God and I'm real and I love you son. And I heard your prayer. I saw your heart and that's why I had to show you firsthand that hell is very real. But all those things that were inside of you, all those demonic forces, all those, all those demonic spirits, I took it out of, out of your life. Now you have been set free. All those spirits are removed from your life. Now go, Lewis, he goes, I got an assignment for you. Go and tell people that I'm coming back soon and go tell them that there's a hell and that there's heaven and the choice is up to them. And Anna, let me tell you that just, that happened on Sunday early morning, one, two, yeah. two, one, two o'clock in the morning. And the next thing I know, I mean, I couldn't even sleep. You can just imagine, Anna. You could. I mean, how can you sleep after that? I remember the uh, the next day was Sunday morning. I go to my church that my brother was. I'm taking me. It was a good sized church, and I, I remember. I mean, I I was the first one there after the after the the um pastor, and man, I told the pastor everything how I mean in great detail everything that I that I saw, everything that I experienced, and the pastor was just like. That happened last night. I'm like, yeah. He was like freaking out. He was like, he goes, hey, I want you to share that testimony this morning to the church. And I was like, Pastor, I was just smoking weed last night, man. <laughs> like, how, how, how you want me to share the testimony? He goes, remember what, remember what God told you. Go and tell people what you saw. So you know what, Anna? I remember, man. I was sitting there in the front row. There was like 400 people going to our church at that at that point. I was so nervous and scared. I was like, Lord, how in the <laughs> world are you gonna do this? Like, I'm like, this happened six hours ago. I'm like, I, it's just like I'm I'm not ready for this, God. And man, Anna, I remember when when the pastor was introducing me. You know, we have a young man here that saw a vision last night, and let me tell you, man, God spoke to him. God changed his life. And I want to introduce him. Bro, Lewis, come up here. And I remember he I was so scared, so timid. But, man, when I grabbed that mic, Anna, something came over me. It was the Holy Spirit. I, I remember I was just preaching the gospel. And I didn't even know the gospel. I was just preaching it and preaching it and preaching it. I was sharing scripture that I didn't even know that I knew. And I was sharing, you know, I got into great detail about hell and, and, and how hell is going to be like. And let me tell you, Anna. Man, everyone was glued when I was talking about hell. And the next thing I know, man, I, I'm 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 seeing people's faces, and they're like, "There's a lot of tears coming down." And in the middle of my testimony, people were coming up to the altar. Literally, this is this is in the, this is at church, coming up to the altar, dropping off zigzags, dropping off pipes, dropping off bags of marijuana. <laughs> Wait, for those who don't know, I don't know what zigzags are. Zigzags what are what you use to roll up the the um, marijuana. They're okay. like the, the the um paper to roll them up. So they're they're dropping zigzags, pipes, marijuana, um, cigarettes, lighters. I mean, I'm thinking. I'm so, I mean, this was happening in the midst of my testimony. Wow. 
And I began to see, Lord, I mean, I'm looking at, at these people and I'm talking, I'm looking at, at what they're putting on the altar. I'm like, wow, like this is inside church. And now I know why God has to clean up his church first. Amen. And so anyway, so I, after my testimony, I mean, the pastor knew that. I mean, he had to do an altar call right there and then why wait? And man, the 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 power of God fell upon that place and the Holy Spirit, people were delivered from addictions, from strongholds, from demonic strongholds, everything, oppression, the depression, alcohol, drug addictions were gone that day, Anna. And I'll never forget, my like, God, this is crazy. Like, how you're using me to set people free? I mean, that just started everything in my life. So that so that happened October 11, 2003. And Anna, ever since then, I've been serving the Lord. I've been on fire for God for 18 years. The way I've been preaching back then, I'm still preaching today. You saw me. I, I, I am bold. I'm courageous because I know, Anna, that hell is very real. Absolutely. And a lot of people that are watching me, they may not believe that hell is, is not real. And let me tell you, people, hell is very, very real. Because I was in your shoes. I was once, you know, I denied God. I didn't believe in God. I meant I would make fun of God. I would make fun of everybody that believed in God. And so God showed me, okay, you know what? You want to you, you go down that road? Let me show you firsthand what hell feels like. And Anna, let me tell you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go to hell. And that's why I'm a gospel preacher. I'm the I'm a preacher of the blood. I'm a preacher of repentance because I understand that is a secret to living a righteous life is by literally following God and 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 repenting. I mean, that's just the word that you know you don't hear, Hannah. You don't hear that word a lot no more in any church. And so you know what? But we need to go back to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that was his gospel. His gospel was a gospel of repenting. We all need to repent because trust me, we all need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. So Anna, I was just like you. I know that you're in, you were in um, an yeah. atheist too, right? I, I was, and and what's interesting is that I have the other side of that. You know, you were taking to hell. The Lord for me, I mean, you, for the ones who have watched my YouTube channel and know my story, I have a testimony where I was 18 years old as an atheist blaspheming God, mm. Jerusalem at the Western yeah. Wall. Wow. And as I was blaspheming God and saying, look at these idiots praying to a God that doesn't exist. The Lord opened the heavens and I experienced heaven for half wow. an hour. It was it was my like my spirit was there. It, I was overflowed with love, joy, happiness, wow. holy pleasure. Like mm. I remember if I can pinpoint every single emotion and it was like times it by 10,000 it was incredible every single emotion so when you talk about that drug high what hmm. was interesting when i was in that i would i would basically call it a trance really while yeah. i was in that trance because it wasn't a vision while i was in that moment i knew in my spirit even though i did not know i had a spirit i knew in yes. here in in my belly yeah. i knew this is what heaven feels like 24 7. Yeah. i knew that i knew that i knew that i knew that to be a fact and the second yeah. thing i knew and i actually heard it in my in my mind i heard it this yeah. is why the devil created drugs yes to mimic the holy spirit yes i had no idea what the holy spirit was yeah. but that's what i heard and so as you're talking about you know you were longing for that feeling that high that you felt with God, which was a holy high. Yes. It really on. is a pure mm. holy high. It's his Holy Spirit. Mm. I, I knew in that moment when I was 18, because I, I I I didn't do drugs, but I tried things here and there. Yeah. And I was I was too scared to OD, so I would do like a little bit of it. <laughs> but I remember don't worry, my, hey, I did enough drugs for the both of us, all right? So don't worry about it. <laughs> well yeah, I mean listen, if I did, I would be honest about it. I, I yeah. tried a little bit. I was too scared to OD. And but when I did try it, I remember my heart was racing. I yes. forgot, I didn't like it. I was terrified. I never touched it again. And you know, again in that moment in Jerusalem when that Holy Spirit over flowed and just my head you know in the psalm 23 you know he anointed my head with oil and my head mm. and my cup overflowed oh. and it did and so that really reminds me of of, of what you were saying because that's really what our spirits are longing for and that's what i heard this is why the devil created drugs because yes. 
he he makes us because our spirits long for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and and we got to you know that's the that's the thing I tell people. That's why I can't relate with with people that have you know that are still in drugs, still abusing drugs, you know, alcohol, all kinds of addictions. Because I understand they're 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 trying to find that high that's only found through the Holy Spirit. And when they and and when the Holy Spirit just comes upon any of us, you know it's genuine. You know it's 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 a it's like a presence that you have been longing for all of your life. And when you finally experience it, Anna, I mean, you, you can't explain it. You can only experience it because it, it, it's just like, you don't want to leave. I'm like, I remember when I was floating there. I mean, I literally felt like, like I was floating because it was like a, a heavily high. I heard angels just singing glory and hallelujah all around me, a beautiful choir. And I was like, I mean, I, I just, I was so afraid to open them to open up my eyes because I was like, Lord, I don't even, I don't, I don't want this moment to end. And I was just, I just had my eyes closed and just, I felt like I was floating. I was like, wow, this is what real high in God really, really feels like. And so it was an amazing thing. And that's why I tell people there's nothing, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Oh, Anna, I it tell people nothing. all the time. There's nothing Get in nothing. the presence of God. Let me tell you something, because there's a lot of Christians that are, they're running on fumes today. They're running in circles today. Why? Because they have forgotten their first love. And when we, when we forget our first love, Anna, let me tell you, man, we start living our, our lives for us instead of him. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, go back to your first love. Remember mm -hmm. the way it felt when you first came to the Lord. Remember that feeling. He's right. waiting for you. And also those who don't know the Lord, Pastor Lewis, oh, yes. led for you to lead people right yes. now to Jesus. Guys, if you're watching this this video stream, guys, and if you don't know Jesus, I, you know what? I'm going to tell you what my brother told me. I dare you to give Jesus six months of your life. And if God don't change you in six months, then go back to your drugs, go back to your addictions, go back to your strongholds. But let me tell you something. I know God will meet you there because if he met me, I was a sinner of all sinners, people. And he but did it I in one day. I don't, he did yes. it in one day. Not even six months. He did it in one yes. day for you. He did it for me in two weeks. But you know what? And Before that Saturday, I was literally on my knees every single night crying out to him because I wanted to know if he was real. And if you seek him, you will find him. I promise you. And so, guys, I encourage you, please, 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 don't let today go by without you reaching out to Jesus. Just talk to him. He's there. He's waiting for you to meet him there. And let me tell you, once you do that and once and once his presence hits you, once the Holy Spirit hits you, once you hear his voice and feel his presence, let me tell you guys, oh, man, you're going to know what I'm talking about. You're going you're gonna to know what Anna is talking about because I'm... Why do you think that we we went from being atheist to now serving God? I mean, you can't explain it. You have to go through it. Everyone has to go through it. And that's why God is such an awesome God, because he gives us grace. He gives us mercy, even though we are, man, the, the scum of the of the world. And uh, I mean, I think about that. How can God imagine you and me were once atheists? And now look what we're doing. We've been serving God. I'm like, Lord, wow, what an amazing privilege yes. it is to be ambassadors of christ mm. wherever and, we go we have the presence of god with us yes and it really takes that experience because for me when my mom got saved and she took me as a little child to church i yeah. saw religion i never had an experience so yes. that's why i became an atheist and there's many people longing for an experience agnostics are longing yes um, atheists are just they made their decision. I yeah. mean, I made my decision until the Lord smacked me in the face in the most That's amazing right. way. So for those that don't know Jesus are longing or want to know, maybe they're curious. Atheists are like, well, I don't know. I'm open to it. How, exactly. what, what do they do? I look, this is what I did. Okay. I literally got on my knees for the first time in all my, in all my life. I was 25 years old. I was lost. And I was like, okay, what? At that point, I had nothing to lose. What do you have to lose by getting on your knees and calling out to the Lord 
The, and the word of God, the word of God says, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wow, what a promise. So I dare you to get on your knees tonight. Even today, when maybe, while, you, while you're watching this video, man, just right now, get on your knees and ask God. Mm. Talk to him. Go before the throne boldly and courageous. Just talk to him. Tell him. Ask him. Tell him. Vent to him. I was venting to him. Yeah. I was literally telling him how I felt. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of people talking about you, but I don't know you personally. And be real with God. Listen, and to you become real with God, God can be real with you. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, the, the problem with, with a lot of people is that we have a mask on. Mm -hmm. And God wants you to take off that mask and just be real. Be real to God. And once you become real with God, let me tell you, man, he begins to, he will invade your life. He will get into that closet that only he knows what's in that closet. Yes. And let me tell you, man. Oh. Free you from all of it. Yes. So and actually, just remember, the Lord just reminded me, I was also on my knees when I begged. There you and go. I, I mean, I cried out. I wouldn't say begged, but I cried out. I was on yes. my knees, hysterical, broken, lost, and didn't mm -hmm. knew that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Yep. And, and that's, that's what God, see, God, people forget this, that God is our father. Yes. I have two small children. Think of it like when my children need me, why would I abandon them? I would do whatever it takes to go to them, especially when they're hurt and when they're crying. Like yesterday, for example, we're here at the church doing some stuff and, and, and my son, the door, you know, hits his, hits his fingers. And of course, right away, like, as a father, I go and I and I and I hold his hand and I squeeze his hand. And I start praying, please, Father, heal my heal 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 these 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 beautiful fingers in the name of Jesus. But see, I was there instantly. I I wanted him to understand that I'm there. Yes, you know what? He did cry. It did hurt, but that's life. We're not going to go through ups and downs. But understand that we have a father. He's waiting for you to ask him that you need his help. And to you ask him, he won't come in. You got to invite him into your mess. That's right. You have to invite and, him uh, in and let him clean it out. Yeah. So Pastor Lewis, for those that are ready to accept Jesus right oh, now, let's now. say they pause the video, they feel the presence of the Lord, yes, they're on. crying. Mm -hmm. How do they accept Jesus in their heart? I want you to literally, if you're ready to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're ready to be born again, I want you to literally get on your knees. There's not a secret prayer to pray. No, you, you just just be real with the Lord. Get on your knees and cry out to him and ask for forgiveness. You ask him, Father, I've messed up. I'm sorry for doing all these other things but you. I'm sorry for putting my eyes on the world but you. And just be real with him. Just say, Lord, I want to receive you in my heart today. I want to. I want that. I want that feeling and experience that Anna had and that Pastor Lewis has. I want that. Invite him. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And once you do that, oh, just open up your hands and just say, Lord, thank you, Lord, because now I belong to you. This heart is yours. And the Word of God says that He'll give you a heart of flesh, because a lot, a lot of us have a heart of stone. Where we're prideful people. And, and so God breaks breaks that heart and he softens that heart. Then the Holy Spirit can come in and you become a vessel, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now the, the Holy Spirit can come in because now you are inviting him into your home, into your temple, into your life, into your heart, into your soul. And when you do that, he begins to enlighten you with a whole new mindset. He transforms this. He transforms this. And let me tell you, you begin to walk righteously because you understand that now God has saved you. And your next step is to get baptized. Once you receive the Lord, once you receive, once you made that commitment to follow God, I encourage you, find a church, a low, a Bible believing church. Don't, don't, don't get, don't go, don't go to a church that preaches the watered down gospel. Go to a Bible believing church. Talk to the pastor, sign up for baptisms, get baptized because Jesus was our example. If Jesus got baptized, so do we. Why, what does that mean? Our old life is dying and our new life is rising in Christ. Man, church, 
once you do that, guys, let me tell you something. You are making a public confession in the eyes of Satan saying that I'm going to serve God. And that's why it's, it's important that we do that in front of witnesses because we are called to be witnesses for the Lord. And, and plug yourself into a church, guys. Let me tell you, begin to grow in God. Because remember, it's a sin. It's not a sin to be small. It's a sin to stay small. we got to mature in the ways of the Lord. Because what the, the, the problem, and I've seen this way too many times, a lot of people come to the Lord. And they repent. And they receive Christ. They get baptized. But then they still go back to their old ways. It shouldn't be no more. Now you are a new creation, a new life. Mm. We, the first thing, Anna, that I did when I came to the Lord, because I was serious about my commitment to God, I changed all my friends. And that's huge, remember, right. because, because the Lord told me, you are who you hang out with. And if I want to be a great man of God, I can't hang around people that do drugs. I just can't. It's not going to work. And so if, if you made that commitment today, I want you to make a commitment to hang around godly people because that's how you're going to change your life because they're going to hold you accountable. They're going to pray for you. You're going to go and have fun with them. You're going to go and hang out and all that, but they're going to encourage you. They're going to fight with you. They're going to raise your hands up when you feel like quitting. You know how many times, man, it's, it is hard, but you know what? It's all worth it because I know that God's with us. Even as a pastor today, guys, you don't think I struggle? Of course I do. But I know who's in me. I know that God loves me. I know that he's my father. He's there with me. And so please, guys, if you if you made that choice today, go find a church, get baptized. Mm -hmm. Show the world that you're serious about your, about your commitment. Mm -hmm. And watch and get plugged into church. Grow in the word of God. Oh, man. And become and become that great servant of the Lord. Go. And now go. And now after that, your job is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because that's what Anna's doing. That's what I'm doing. You don't have to be a pastor to be a preacher. Nuh -uh. Go and preach the gospel to all nations. That's your job. Your family can be saved because of your testimony, because of your because of your conversion to Jesus Christ. It's, it's powerful. All it takes is one person to change. For your whole family to to change yes and don't and get discouraged and I'm, starting, and I'm starting to see that in my family people yes. are, you know it's they huge. they made fun of me before but guess who's the first person they call when they need there prayer? you go it's me there you go. and so you've been so you went from a life on drugs to a yes. pastor for the past 18 years because you really continued Amen. preaching ever since oh, the day yeah. after you got saved <laughs> and now you're having this rgv tent revival yes. nationwide tell us about it it's exciting yes well last fall this started you know i was preaching one sermon you know i was preaching and and i was like you know what everybody knows that statement that don trump said you know make america great again and which is a great statement right of course it's, it's from ronald reagan but anyways I was just preaching, preaching, and all of a sudden I was like, you know what? We don't need to make America great again. We need to make America godly again. So that slogan, that, I mean, it just stayed with us. And It's and on your shirt, lot, too. Yeah, it's on my shirt. You know, and so yeah. a lot of a lot of our uh, members from, from our church was like, Pastor, man, we need to do that. How about we go out there and we start literally go out there to the, to these, um, to these Trump trains and let's go and let's preach the gospel. Let's go. And let me tell you guys, this thing took off. Like I was like, wow, Lord. So Larry, so, so we started a, a whole new movement called make America God again. And let me tell you, Anna, man, the Lord began to open doors for us. There was a massive movement. There's revival happening. Souls were, were being won. And let me tell you, it was just an amazing feeling. So, I mean, our shirts, a matter of fact, you no, know, talking about our shirts, Anna, give me your address so I can send you one. Um, we're gonna, I mean, our shirts have been mailed, mailed out all across the nation. I'm like, wow, Lord. I mean, literally people have just been drawn to this movement. And now I know why God had me start this, this massive movement because revival has to happen here in America. You know, Anna, that man, America has lost its way. And we truly know that we have lost our way. We have, we have put our eyes on man instead of God. And our pride is, 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 is huge. You know, God has to break this pride. And so let me tell you, so God has, has given me kind of like a, like a prophetic voice, like a voice in the wilderness, like a prophet, like a, like a modern day Jeremiah slash Nehemiah to say, you know what? Enough is enough. 
we got to, I mean, we're going to have another shirt that, uh, that actually reads make America repent. And because that's what we need. We need America to repent, especially the church, the church of Jesus Christ needs to repent. And so, but yeah, so this movement, Anna, it just took off and started, started last fall. So now it moved into a tent revival. And so, because the, I mean, the Lord has been stirring in me. If you're going to start this, you, you better finish it. And so let me tell you, Anna, because I mean, it was a lot of work, a lot of, I mean, every weekend we were man, going to different, different cities, you know, going out there, waving our flags, talking to people, praying for people, worshiping the Lord. I mean, it was kind of like nonstop for like three months. I'm like, Lord, I need a break here. <laughs> and so, uh, but the Lord said, nope, you, you better finish what you start. So now coming to this year, you know, um, the Lord put in my heart to to do a tent revival. Now, now it's called the RGV Tent Revival. So we're going to start down here in South Texas. Actually, Pastor Greg Lott. Uh, which is a great pastor here here in America and um, Tennessee. He donated a brand new tent to us. It's coming in this week. I'm excited. It's it's a wow. it's a 60 by 90 foot tent. It's a massive tent. It sits close to 700 people. So Anna, I'm excited. I'm saying, Lord, because I told the Lord, Lord, if you want me to do this, you know, I it, it takes money. It takes finances. I mean, you know what? I mean, yeah, I need it's provision. It's Exactly. And he'll always supply, especially when it's obviously number one, his will, you will yes. see supernatural provision. Like the Lord told me I'm moving and I'm in the midst of moving and he is providing for everything, nothing out of pocket. Like he's providing everything. It's really it. incredible. But for those maybe wondering, what does RGV stand for? RGV stands for Rio Grande Valley. That's the sector which, which we live in here in South Texas. So if you don't know where the Rio Grande Valley is, it's literally we're on the border. Brownsville is, I live here in, in Harlingen, Texas. We're like 30 minutes south, north, I'm sorry, of Brownsville, which is the border town. So from Brownsville all up to Rio Grande City, all the edge of the border, that, 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 that whole sector is called the Rio Grande Valley. And let me tell you, there's been revival happening here in the Rio Grande Valley. People are excited. I mean, we are flipping this valley red not only for jesus christ but for the right party amen Amen. i Let's heard go. i heard yes let me tell Latino you are, my friend she's yes. doing a great job out there we are doing some we are doing some damage here so i'm excited to partner up with a lot of different people god's been opening doors for me politically i never thought and let me tell you something even right now i'm like lord i never thought in my wildest dreams that the lord would be using me politically to 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 wow. speak a prophetic message to the patriots of this of this of this great nation, but you know what? I take that platform and I, and I make his name famous and not my name because I know I'm nothing, Anna. I'm nothing. Yeah, Amen. Well, I have to say, I mean, and I said this in the beginning in your intro that I saw you on stage in Arizona. I was yeah. like, who is this fiery preacher? <laughs> I mean, bold, fiery, the yes. presence of the Lord, conviction. I just mm. felt it. I was like, wow, the Holy Spirit's really moving. You really are anointed and we give the glory to God. Yes, we definitely. Are nothing. We are nothing. And that's what and I've been doing, Anna. Listen, every time they invite me to go speak nationally, let me tell you, when I get that mic, I say, Lord, I'm going to speak what you want me to speak. Not what I want, what you want. Because if it was me, I'd be like, okay, guys, glory to God. <laughs> you know, let's let's love the Lord. No, I mean, I get that oh, mic and I let it, because listen, Anna, this is this is this is a heart problem. This we got we got to go to the root of the problem. Right now, what we're doing as a nation, what we're, what we're doing as as patriots and as as a church, we are putting a band aid on the symptom, on the sickness. It's, it's not going to work. That band aid is not going to do anything. We need to go to the root of the problem, and the root of the problem, we un we understand that it's it's evil. And who's the father of all evil? His name is Satan. And we got to go to the, to the roots of where all these things started from. It started from, we took prayer out of school and we didn't do anything about it. We took prayer out of, out of, out of, out of, out of the White House, out of our government. I mean, we, I mean, Roe versus Wade, we got that passed and the church stayed silent. That's right. So all these yeah. things, it was just brewing and brewing and brewing. And now we have, a society that is godless. Why? Because it's our fault. That's I right. blame myself. Because we didn't do our jobs. Now we have millennials. 50% of millennials today do not believe in Jesus Christ. 
what happened to all the godly homes that we have that we had back in the 80s and 90s think about that Anna. no it's a great question everything starts at home That's so when, when when we hit the roots of the problem which is our homes if our homes are destroyed how much more our country wow. imagine that anna i mean think about that if our parents don't even believe in god how much our children i tell people all this all the time you want to make america god again but how about you make your home godly let's start there let's, let, let us let's start there and be an example to your kids i mean yeah. you have truth bombs and when i was a youth pastor and it would break my heart. You know how many times I would have to rebuild teenagers up every single week. Why? Because their parents will tear them down, cuss them out. You know, I mean, literally, I'm thinking, and, the, and these are Christian parents telling off their own children, calling them losers, calling them drug addicts, calling them all these kind of names, the all, all the B words, the, all, all the profanities. I mean, it was, and then they're there Sunday morning praising God. Anna, That's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm like, what gospel are you reading? And so yeah. let me tell you, Anna, I mean, mm -hmm. we have to fix our homes. Remember, the altar, God always says, remember, Elijah and First Kings, he had to build the altar of God. He had to repair the altar of God. When, when we repair the altar of God in our homes, when our homes are godly again, Anna, then we can begin to 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 bring this movement into our communities into our state into our nation but if our if our homes and our aren't golly then what are we trying to do here i mean think about that i mean what what how can we say that we want to make america god again if our homes aren't even godly that's the root of the problem is our homes right now we don't have fathers we don't have godly fathers i cannot wait for father's day i want to hit the fathers hard with the gospel because we have fathers right now that are cowards, mm. that, are, that are not stepping up and being that godly role model for their children. Because they didn't have godly fathers. So it's yes. time to break the cycle. Yes. And this you is why believe it. We got to break that Bible, curse. What, what Pastor Mario Murillo was doing also with his temple. Yes. I saw and pictures. He, like, wow. I love the fact that. We're going to bring him down here, too. All right, I'm going to bring Pastor Mario down here, too. So I'll tell, I cannot yes. wait to look up with that great man of God. Yes, he's a great man of God. So, so, so Anna, we want to. So, the whole point about this revival mm -hmm. is to revive our own hearts, but not only that, to revive our homes. This is how we make America God again. We need revival in ourselves and our in our homes. We need the fathers and the mothers to repent because they haven't done their jobs. Amen. And once we do that, man, we're going to experience a revival across this whole nation. Oh. So and I cannot, but it takes we, the church, it's my people who are called by my name. That's that's you and me, Anna. Mm -hmm. If we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways. Seek his face and pray. <sighs> then that's he it. will hear our yeah, prayer. And, and he will that. hear, exactly. But right now he's not hearing. Why? Because we haven't done that. We, we haven't, haven't done that. ourselves and repent. We haven't done the, the um, first part of that scripture. Yes. We're still trying to. We're trying to fix this nation without God. Good luck. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, it's, it's not, not going to happen. So I've been, you know, Anna, I speak the truth because, listen, I need it in my life. I have to repent. I have to live righteously. I have to walk righteously. I have to be all a godly. You know what? Last week I was sitting, I was on my phone, and my son was eating dinner. And um, it was just me and my son. And I remember I was on my phone at the dinner table. And I was looking at my son, I'm looking at my cell phone, and, and I was like, you know what, Lord? I'm here sitting at the dinner table with my son, and I yet I don't I can't even speak to him because I'm busy on my phone. And I'm saying, you know what? I put my phone down, Anna, and I began to talk to my son one on one. He's he's eight years old, Anna. His name is Elijah. I go, Elijah, let me tell you something, son. I'm sorry for being busy. I know your daddy's been busy, but son, I love you, son. And I began to pour into my own son, telling him why I'm doing it, everything that I'm doing, why I love Jesus. And I'll never forget it, Anna, the way he was looking at me, Anna. Wow. I was like, wow, 
That's what I'm talking about, Anna. We are so busy trying to fix this nation, but our homes are falling apart. And the, and the Lord, he, may, he convicted me. Yes, I know that you're doing all these things, but you have to make time for your family. And, and I spoke to my son. I poured into him for like 30 minutes straight. And I remember I hugged him and I told him, son, I love you. I want you to serve God all the days of your life. And I prayed with him. I mean, it was just a God. It was a father and son moment. And, 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 and Anna, once we go back to that, imagine how powerful our homes will become when, when we have men and women of God leading their homes righteously and spending time with their family, praying for the children, praying together, blessing our children every single night, Anna, every single night. Amen. I pray with my children. I pray the, the um, priestly blessing and number 624. When, and when the Lord bless you and keep you, may his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his contents upon you and give you everlasting peace. And then we say, I cover the top of my head to the soles of my feet with the blood of Jesus. Amen. We Amen. say that prayer every single night because I want my son and my daughter to understand that I, I got to be a preacher. I got to be a father. I got to be a godly husband. You got to be the ambassador, the example. And my home first. Everything starts at home. I can't be out here preaching, preaching all of this. It starts at home, Anna, but then my home is falling apart. That makes me a hypocrite. That's right. And let me tell you, Anna, let me tell you that the Lord has Christian. been talking to me. Yes. So let me tell you, if I can make a difference in my own house, how much more are you? We all have influence, but use that influence for your home. Yeah. Use I mean, it's not, it's not surprising if you have a broken house and then they get older and then you're wondering what's going on. You're, then you're trying to fix your yes. kids when they get older, when they're on drugs and alcohol, well, you shouldn't, you had the opportunity when they were small. Exactly. Don't waste that oh, time. And, uh, you know how many parents tell me that? How many parents tell me, Pastor, man, but my but my kids are out of, they're, they're already married and they're already in college. It's hard to go back. I go, you know what? When's the last time you called them up and you told them, son, daughter, I'm sorry, I messed up. I messed up. Start there. Start by apologizing to them because you never raised them in a Christian home, even though you were so-called a Christian parent. That's right. Start there. It's never Remember. too late. It's really well, never exactly. too late. You know, I, I have a parent who wasn't always there, and I forgive him. And it's yes. just one time to ask. So, Pastor Lewis, thank you for coming on. We yes, just my pleasure. We your tent revival. Um, I yes. Think you let me know if where you want are. To help us out, I mean, if anybody, if you guys want to help us out, we we are still collecting funds to to um, you know buy yeah. some some last minute things that that we need for our tech revivals. I mean, because we're gonna be a traveling ministry, literally. I mean, wherever wherever city that that we go, we're gonna unload, pop up that that massive tent, and have services there. And so we're gonna start down here in the RGV and work our way up to San Antonio, Houston, El Paso, go to Phoenix. I know that, and then go to oh man, people want to want us to go to um, Phoenix, also to New Mexico. Oh man, we're gonna go to California. Lord, I'm gonna hook up with fire, Pastor Lord. Mario. Come on, somebody, I'm hooking with Pastor Adam Mario. On fire, Lord, amen. Yeah, so we're gonna Can go you? all around the nation. Anna, I don't know how it's gonna happen, but the Lord knows how. Because <laughs> I'm like, Lord, <laughs> this is. But you know what? But the Lord is sending me people. Yeah, that's what I love. And so, guys, if you want to help give to this tent revival, because like I said, we still need to buy some last minute things and, and some items, sound equipment, chairs, other other things, trailers, go to rgvtentrevival.com. rgvtentrevival.com. Please give whatever the Lord puts in your heart. Give if it's $100, a 1000 whatever the Lord puts in your heart. And trust me, we're going to use that money to bring revival to our homes to our states, to our cities, and to this nation, because this nation needs Jesus Christ. And that's the only way we're going to turn this wicked ship around is with Jesus Christ, because because without him, we are lost. So, Anna, I'm excited for what God's doing. I'm, Anna, I'm excited to come on now. 
fun to the hard yes, you know what we're gonna go to florida hey when we go to tampa you ready come on now you better I, i'll be no. there you better call I want you to, hey i want you to preach somebody come on man i want you to preach I mean, yeah. your testimony from an yeah. atheist to a god-fearing woman of god mm. come on somebody god. amen I, just, I know we all have a testimony so we're gonna hook up anna okay? yeah you know it all right all well right. You, pastor lewis this is awesome yes. um guys i have all his links below you can click on him follow him on facebook again check out his website donate get involved yes. with the great revival that is here amen the great awakening because the lord is returning soon yes he and sure we are is. his ambassadors until he returns we are doing his will yes. and doing his job and like pastor lewis was saying it is all worth it to oh. lay down our life for the king of kings mm. the lord of lords imagine anna when the lord. when the lord tells us welcome home my good and faithful servant oh i can't and i told the lord and i told i mm. i've mentioned this before on my channel i told the lord i said lord i am coming back with millions Amen. I'm coming back with an oh. army i'm yes. coming back i actually saw a vision of it millions of people behind me. We're not going down. We're not going up, I should say. We're not going up and leaving people to go down. No, no. No way. We're taking a whole army. Remember, in, in the last God. days, and the, in, the, the, uh, the word of God says in Joel and Acts 2, that in the last days, I will pour my pour spirit on all, on all flesh. So before Christ comes, there's going to be a massive worldwide revival Whew. before he comes back to us. And I want to be a part of that. Do you, Anna? I do. Do you want to be part of it? Watching? Whew, do you want, I'm people of God. Do you want to be a part of the greatest revival ever to take place yes. globally mm. ever? Angels are watching from heaven. Mm. Your family that's on the other side are watching. Wow. This is the greatest time to literally be alive. Yes. Yeah, so please. And we don't take it for granted. Amen. Guys, find Thank God. You. Mm. Find God and watch. You will find him and he will change your change and transform your life forever. I promise you that. Because if he did it for Anna and me, he can do it for you. That's right. Just believe and you shall receive it. Amen. Amen.